Welcome to Webinar 5 in the Financial Abuse Awareness Series. My name is Bill Mitchell. This series is part of the Financial Protections Project, co-designed by Queensland Government, Caxton Legal Centre and Townsville Community Law. The series is an online continuing professional development program that aims to raise financial industry awareness about financial abuse of older persons. Before we begin, we acknowledge the traditional owners of the land and pay our respects to their elders, past, present and emerging. This presentation is about ageing in context. The slides are not read verbatim, but paraphrased for emphasis. They are designed to be standalone, readable modules and contain references for deeper learning. So let's begin. Before we begin this module, let's take a moment to reflect about this statement from Israel Doran on a newly emerging idea of ageism. Professor Doran, an expert in law and gerontology, is calling for a rethink of how older persons are treated within society. What do you think the context of this call to, arm, call to arms is? Why is there a need for ageism? This module is the first in the knowledge component of the training program. It's about understanding ageing in context, which means understanding the demographics of ageing, both locally and globally, it's about understanding national elder abuse frameworks, Queensland policy frameworks. It's also about understanding that we make sure that older, seeing older people in context includes seeing how services can be delivered in age-friendly manner without resorting to discriminatory societal constructs or stereotypes and making sure we observe legislative and human rights standards. On the right-hand side, you can see the learning outcomes for this module. This module covers the following topics, the population of the world, Australia's ageing population, age as a social construct, and human rights frameworks for older persons. The world's population is living longer, and even the poorest countries have experienced decades of improved life expectancy over the last 50 years. For example, Australians have gained 33 years of life expectancy since 1890, Despite this, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander persons still face a gap in life expectancy of almost 10 years compared with non-Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander persons. Population ageing is one of the most significant social transformations of the 21st century and it has implications for all sectors of society. The number of older persons is expected to more than double by 2050 and triple by 2100. Globally, the population cohort of 60 and over is the fastest growing of all age populations. However, living longer lives can have negative consequences, and exposure to abuse over the life course is one of those consequences. Australia's population of persons aged 60 years and over was 21% in 2017. Half of them had some degree of disability, and one in three was born in a non-English speaking country. Women are still living longer than men, and one quarter of persons aged 65 and over in 2011 were born in a non-English speaking country. The most common non-English speaking countries of birth for older persons were Italy, Greece, New Zealand and Germany. Italian was the most common non-English language spoken at home, followed by Greek and Chinese. For Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander persons in 2016, only 15% were aged 50 and older, 4% were 65 and older, and less than 1% were 85 and over. The proportions for those aged 65 and 85 and over are considerably smaller than the equivalents for the non-Indigenous population. This reflects the higher mortality rate and lower life expectancy of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander persons. The most popular states have the largest share of older persons, and some regions have higher concentrations. Five Australian regions have proportions of 20% or more. In Queensland, that's the Wide Bay region, with almost 22%. In terms of social engagement, one in 10 older persons remains employed, and seven in 10 live in their own home. Three in 10 are volunteers. In 2018, Australians aged 65 and over had a workforce participation rate of 13% and 214,000 persons entered aged care in 2015-2016. Australia's population will continue to age, and by 2051, a quarter of the population will be retirement age. There'll be 
25 centenarians for every 100 babies, and older persons will outnumber children aged 0 to 14. Those who work to support older persons will halve from 5 to 2.5 persons of workforce age, and there'll be some 3.5 million older persons using aged care services, including home and community care. Australia's ageing projections reflect global trends, and they've led to decades of debate about apocalyptic demography, or the belief that increasing dependent ageing population means increasing demands on the resources of society. This language of crisis has been present since the 1980s. In Australia, a range of policy work has been done in respect of the impact on ageing on society. And you can see some highlighted reports there that are important to have a look at. There is now a national plan to respond to the abuse of older Australians. It contains five priority areas listed below. And the government has engaged agencies to conduct a national elder abuse research project. That project comprises three components, developing a nationally accepted definition, developing and testing instruments to measure abuse, and, de and developing a data analysis plan. Obviously, a national research project of this scale is going to influence the way the states and territories approach elder and financial abuse. In Queensland, there was 717,000, almost 718,000 persons aged 65 and over at the last census date. And this means that financial abuse could affect more than 100,000 Queenslanders. The work on elder abuse in Queensland reveals that Queensland began in the early 1990s and a number of services have been introduced over time. The Elder Abuse Prevention Unit was established in 1997 and that same year Caxton Legal Centre piloted an outreach service for older persons. That model later became the SLAF services in five places and was expanded with the Elder Abuse Prevention Services in a further five locations. The history of elder abuse in Australia is relatively new and the first reference to elder abuse was in 1975 in a report by the Social Welfare Commission. Despite this, the abuse and neglect of older persons really wasn't recognised as a problem until even later in the 1980s and slowly emerged as a state-by-state -state issue. The Queensland Government has a strategic policy direction to ensure Queensland is an age-friendly community. It's important that you be aware of this policy strategy. It's a World Health Organization policy. And this Financial Protections Awareness Guide and program taps into two of those domains. Firstly, communication and information. And secondly, community support and health services. The domain on communication and information says that older persons should have access to information that they need in a variety of formats. They recommend that, recommend that action be taken to facilitate older persons' choice and control, and essential elements of communication include the right information at the right time, age-friendly communications, age-friendly formats, and the appropriate use of information technology. And these are good measures to follow in your own dealings with older persons anyway. Secondly, the community support and health services domain says that older persons are helped to stay healthy, active and independent through community support and health services, including services that respond to elder abuse. Allowing older persons to make informed choices about financial matters prevents financial abuse from happening and provides opportunities for intervention when it's already occurring. The essential elements of this include accessibility of services and being linked to networks. You can see a matrix here on the screen that shows those domains under the Age Friendly Communities banner. And how the Financial Protection Service, including this awareness program, fit within that age-friendly strategy. It's important to be aware that social constructs of ageing and old age and ageism play an important role in financial abuse. The status of older persons is a series of constructs in some societies, older persons may be viewed as wise and guardians of social continuity, and in others, they're seen as the heralds of conservatism and privilege. These perceptions that, this, that we hold in society 
shape the rights debate as we seek to come to terms with the distinctive, distinctiveness of the older population. But like children, older people are viewed as a distinct cohort simply because of their age. We really need to be thinking about positive discourse that talks about positive, successful and healthy ageing, and we should be seeking to rebut negative stereotypes. As a group, older persons are simultaneously hidden and marked out through social stereotyping, and their power to define themselves and actively construct their own identities is tempered by powerful cultural ideologies which deny their social worth. The negative attitudes towards the experience of ageing, including perceptions that older people lack worth, and make less of a contribution. While this may not cause abuse of older persons, it can contribute to an environment in which individuals abusing older persons fail to recognise that their behaviour constitutes abuse. Other members of society may fail to notice these negative behaviours or take action to stop them. It's said that ageism is now more pervasive than racism and sexism. The Australian Human Rights Commission's research looking at the stereotypes of older Australians has made some very interesting key findings and I'll leave those on the screen for you to read now. Older persons lack a dedicated comprehensive human rights protection framework and as a group they lack identity as rights holders, so they are vulnerable to human rights violations. Over time and in response to this, members of the international human rights community have called for a new United Nations Convention on the Rights of Older Persons. At the moment, the only law we have is non-binding or soft law, including the United Nations principles for older persons and the plans of action arising from conferences in Vienna and Madrid. The United Nations principles for older persons can be seen there under those five headings of independence, participation, care, self-fulfilment and dignity. The Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disability is also relevant because it applies to older persons in the same way based on its theme, that is, disability. It's a binding legal instrument and allows individuals to bring complaints in certain cases. The Disability Convention applies to older persons with disabilities. But remember that old age is not impairment. And so the Disability Convention only provides limited protection for those who are treated unfairly or unfavourably because of their impairment. It doesn't have an impact on persons who have ageist attitudes. We do have federal and state discrimination laws that protect older persons from discrimination based on age. And complaints about age discrimination can be made under those laws in some cases, however, exemptions apply to the scope of these laws, and there are some financial areas such as superannuation, taxation and insurance, where the laws are limited. The Age Discrimination Act is a Commonwealth law. It protects individuals across Australia from discrimination on the basis of age. You can see on the right hand side, there's an example of what's meant by age discrimination. The Act is administered by the Australian Human Rights Commission, who can accept complaints from a person on the basis of age discrimination. In Queensland, the Queensland Human Rights Commission administers the Anti-Discrimination Act 1991, which also makes it unlawful to discriminate against a person because of their age. And age discrimination includes treating a person less favourably because of their age, or imposing an unreasonable requirement or condition which disadvantages people of a particular age or age groups. Age discrimination covers all aspects of work, as well as other things such as when a person is in a shop or a restaurant, at school or college looking for accommodation, applying for credit, insurance or a loan. Before we leave this module, I want you to think about and locate your own experiences of how you, your colleagues, family and others around you see Australia's ageing issues. Are you aware of positive images of ageing? And what do those images say about our expectations of older age? Or are you aware of negative social constructs of old age and how they are used in popular culture, popular media, advertising, conversation, even jokes? Is your own community age friendly? What about your workplace? Is it age friendly? If so, how so? If not, why not? 
And do we conflate the issue of ageing and disability? And what does that mean for our community attitudes for both older persons and persons with disabilities? Thanks for listening to this webinar series. Feel free to download the PDF for future reference. The next module is on the context of financial abuse. Thanks for listening.